Well, print ham down pawb and croissant a guinea at a heed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the cook along. My name is Richard, and with you today, as you can see on the screen just next to me, we're going to be making some wonderful Welsh Glamorgan sausages, which I promise you are absolutely delicious, and we're going to serve those as a nice lunchtime dish with a nice easy side salad. So let's get cracking with uh, today's recipe, and I'm hoping by now that my computer skills are working and if I just click there the recipe card for this afternoon's um, Glamorgan sausages has just come up and you can see that the star of the show uh, in terms of our Glamorgan sausage is the humble uh, Welsh ingredient that we are all wearing on St David's Day which is our leek um, and uh, there's lots of different ways that you can prepare the leek but basically we've got one leek that we need to prepare in a couple of moments and then for these little Glamorgan sausages and traditionally these would be made using lots of leftover ingredients um, from the pantry and from the fridge we're going to be using um, some potatoes and rather than using new potatoes or um, old potatoes today I've decided to cheat a little bit and we're going to be using a can of new potatoes that have already been cooked for us so it saves a lot of time we've got um, some cheese that we're going to be adding and then we've got some flour we've got some herbs we've got some mustard and as you can see on the uh, recipe card we've also got some breadcrumbs to add in a couple of moments so let's get cracking um, with this recipe and I promise you if you've got younger people uh, in the family this is a really good recipe for them to get involved in and it's also going to help towards your five a day and as I said you can add whatever favorite your favorite vegetables are to this recipe now then in terms of our leek there's lots and lots of ways of preparing our leek and there's a little bit of pre-preparation that we do need to do for this recipe and that's just preparing and chopping up our leek and cooking it either on the hob in a little bit of vegetable oil or as I've done today I just cooked it in my microwave just on top of the fridge um, just there um, I wasn't pointing to midair I promise and uh, cooked it for about um, two or three minutes on high and you get perfectly cooked uh, little pieces of um, leek just there but let me show you how easy it is to prepare our leek and um, what I have done already I've got just got this lined bit just there but I've already cut it in half slit down the edge and you can see that we can then wash it to get out any of the grit that's in there then in terms of preparing it um, I like to do two knife skills when I'm preparing uh, fr fruits and vegetables or any sort of food and I'm going to be this afternoon using these little serrated edge knives and because it's serrated it means that we're not able to chop 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 we must saw 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 or in Welsh cleave our cleave our cleave so where I've already cut it I'm going to make my hand as what I call a little bridge and I'm just going to saw it in half just like that put my knife down and now it's much easier to handle we can put it flat down on the surface so the way that I like to do it flat down the surface and the other skill that I like um, to teach when I'm working out in schools and communities when I'm allowed um, is to do the claw technique so to make the claw technique a little bit easier way of doing it put your hand out flat just like that your busted or your fingers go together your beast bowed goes underneath and then you curve your busted over so it's a little bit rawr, like an animal's claw right so your thumb in the back fingers pointing straight down with my little serrated knife, I'm not going to chop, chop, chop. We must cleave our, cleave our, cleave our. Saw, 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 saw. And you're just going to carry on sawing that down until you get to the end. Now, the key is with our little Glamorgan sausages, because they're fairly small, we're going to be making um, uh, smaller ones uh, during today's session. We want them to be those pieces to be quite um, thin. So you're looking for just under half a centimetre in um, sort of um, thickness, just like that. So I've got those ones just there. So that's one way in which you can prepare them using your um, bridge and claw and your little knife. However, if you've got younger children in uh, the family um, and uh, you want them to help preparing this, there's an even easier way of them to prepare them, right? So I'm just gonna make my fingers a claw and just cut that in half. Then your younger children just gets a piece like that and there's all these little lines. And all they're going to do is just tear them down 
just like that. And if you're looking for a um, keep them quiet for five minute uh, sort of job, this works really, really well. I've done it uh, when I've been out in nurseries and uh, preschool settings and even foundation phase uh, infant schools. And we've all done it super, super quiet, just like that. And we've tried to listen to the leak being shredded. And it's wonderful. You say, are you listening to the, to the children? And they all turn back and go, yes, yeah, like that. It's a wonderful whispering sort of activity so they can carry on doing that until they've done all of that and that a whole leak doing it that way will take a good 10 minutes right that will take 30 seconds but shredding it just as so will take about uh, 10 minutes right is really good fun so once you've done all of that as i said you then need to um prepare and cook your leak so you've got a couple of options as I've already mentioned, there's that one little teaspoon of oil on the recipe card. You can cook it in a pan in that little teaspoon of oil. Don't brown, uh, allow them to brown, just let them sweat off in their own juices and that little bit of oil. Or as I've done, you can pop them a little bit of water on top of your leeks into the microwave then for two to three minutes on high and you end up with those perfectly cooked leeks. So we've got those leeks and all I'm going to do with those is I'm going to pop them straight into my mixing bowl just like that because now they're ready um, for um, me to um, add the rest of the ingredients. So the next thing that we are going to worry about is our potatoes and uh, in the recipe card you can see on there we've got one can of of potatoes that's equal to about two sort of large um, potatoes that you would uh, you could mash down um, cook and mash down as well however I really like using these little cans of potatoes because they've already been cooked for us so that process has been taken out but more importantly they're really really soft enough to grate right and they're not very good at mashing them straight away but you can grate them really really well now then in terms of graters there's lots of different graters that you can uh, buy out there um, I really like this little rotary grater um, I've got this oval one just here and I'm going to show you the other one uh, using the other one afterwards but I see so many accidents with people grating their fingers that I just want to talk a little bit about the safe way of grating and when I may mean accidents I mean not just children Children, but also adults in my uh, community groups as well. So what you're going to do is on my uh, oval grater make sure that the teeth are running away from you right and all that you're going to do is you grate down and pick it up down and down and down and as you're picking it up it gives you a little bit more chance to move your fingers up whatever you're grating just like that and I'm just going to grate those down and then I can just do this one just like that so grate down move it up grate down grate down grate down and it's a fantastic way of uh, grating your potatoes then afterwards you can actually mash them down a lot easier so I'm just going to grate those just like that now you don't have to wait 10 minutes for me to grate them all because you'll be pleased to know I've already grated most of my can of potatoes so I'm just going to wipe away with the teeth running away from me I can just pull those off just like that and you can see that I've got all of my grated potato um, just in there right so into my bowl I've got my leeks just there and I've got my can of potatoes um, and obviously if you're going to use just um, freshly mashed potato then that uh, you wouldn't have to add any extra ingredients to it just mash the potatoes down and then you've got that just there the next thing that we've got is we have got our cheese and this is the Glamorgan side of the um, little um, Glamorgan sausages right traditionally we would be using something like a kafilia crumbly um, ish sort of cheese that's lovely and uh, creamy and things like that however right because it's a mild cheese we need more of it to get that cheesy flavour. So in terms of healthier eating, this afternoon I've chosen, or today rather, I've chosen to use um, some uh, Welsh mature cheddar that's reduced fat. And that means because it's mature, we can use less of it to get that cheesy flavour. And in actual fact, the recommended daily amount of cheese that we should be eating is a matchbox size, which is equal to about an ounce or 30 grams, right? So that, is your daily recommended amount of cheese. When I work in uh, community groups, I hold that up and people get really, whew, 
that's not very much. However, the message is from um, Public Health and on that Eat Well guide is that if we grate it, it goes a lot further. So if I just pop that just into there, and this is my rotary grater, and I love this grater, it's great, okay? Um, and if I just grate down just like that, and young children love using this because what we do, we turn and turn and turn and tap. Or in Welsh, troi a throi a throi a tap. Troi a throi a throi a tap. Troi a throi a throi a tap. Turn and turn and turn and tap. Turn and turn and turn and tap. And you can see how much more cheese you're actually getting when you grate it, right? Um, and that's, um, if you're filling a sandwich, it's going to be a lot more. So. As I'm doing a full quantity this afternoon, the recipe is for um, 60 grams, 50 to 60 grams of cheese, which is equivalent to two of these. So I'm just gonna pop that just into there, and the top's just come off, but we'll persevere. Something always happens when I'm doing these live videos. Um, and we're just gonna grate down just like that, and tap, turn and turn and turn and tap, turn and turn and turn and tap. My handle's fallen off. Um, and turn and turn and turn and tap, turn and turn and turn and tap. And I've got all of my cheese, just 50 grams of cheese just going into there like that. And you can give that then a really good um, mix just as so. The final things that we're going to add is the extra bits of flavour, okay? So what I've got just here is I've got half a teaspoon of dried mixed herbs, or you could add two um, dessert spoons of freshly chopped uh, um, mixed herbs, or, uh, or parsley rather, and I've got half a teaspoon of dried mixed herbs. So I'm gonna add all of those because that's gonna add the flavor because we're not gonna add any extra salt um, to this recipe. The salt and all the flavor is gonna come from that mature flavored cheese and also the mixed herbs, as well as that half a teaspoon of, um, uh, what have I got that's there? Oh, mustard, whole grain mustard. You could either use Dijon or we've got mustard, or you could even use um, a Welsh mustard from the Welsh Mustard Company, or you um, could uh, use Dijon mustard or something like that. So I'm just gonna give that a really good mix. And then the final thing that we're going to do, because we're using the canned potatoes, um, is we need some breadcrumbs, but I'm also just going to add just a teaspoon of um, plain flour and that helps to soak up a little bit more of the liquid. So I'm just going to give um, that just a final little mix and then the final thing that we need to add is our breadcrumbs and I need 50 grams of breadcrumbs. I've got about 45 um, grams just there so I just wanted to show you the last pit bit of grating just here and whenever I'm making breadcrumbs um, I mostly use a machine put my uh, crusts and whatever bread I got left over in my little uh, blender put press the button and it makes them within uh, five seconds right but if you haven't got a blender then you can easily make breadcrumbs from um, any type of bread I particularly like purchasing that wholemeal um, sort of part bake roll because it grates really really well and you end up with a lovely fine um, little breadcrumbs so this is just a little end that I've got left just there and all that you need to do you can see that it crumbles down really well really well and then grating down move away great 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 down move away now if you're using some um a slice of bread wholemeal bread that's obviously going to be higher in fiber which is healthier for us but i suggest that you just toast it um, and leave it out for a couple of hours just in the air to sort of harden up and it makes it much easier um, to um, grate um, down afterwards. So all that we've got, we've got my breadcrumbs just there. As I said, I just needed another five grams. So I'm just gonna pop those just into there and then we can add all of those just into there like that. And that's gonna help to bulk the recipe out, but more importantly, help to soak up a lot of that liquid. So that's that um, just there. And there's one more thing that I then need to add. The final bit is a little bit of egg and uh, you probably only need about half a teaspoon um, to a, a dessert spoon of um, egg rather. And all I'm gonna do is just crack that just as so, open him up and I can pop that into my compost bowl just there. I can give that just a little whisk 
just as so and then the final thing is as I said I'm just going to add a dessert spoon just into there just like that and that I know I've added extra sort of um, liquid to it now but it's also going to help to bind everything together so when it goes into the oven it's not going to uh, just sort of fall apart right it's going to help to bind it um, as well and we're also going to add it and um, to coat the breadcrumbs afterwards so all we're going to do is um, there's a couple of ways that, in which you can do it you can now at this stage shape it and then um, cool it down or what I find a little bit easier, particularly with this mixture, particularly when we're using the um, sort of canned potatoes, is if you now just press all that down, pop it into the fridge for um, about half an hour just to chill, just to sort of start to solidify. It makes it a lot easier to um, sort of um, shape it afterwards. So what I'm going to do is if you talk amongst yourselves just for a couple of moments and obviously uh, this afternoon we have got um, the chat function on. So if you have got any questions, then please do pop the questions into the uh, comment section and either myself or one of the Food Veil um, team will um, um, answer those questions for you. So I'm just going to tidy my area up just a little bit and I'm a typical man, I can't do two things at once so bear with me. Um, so let me just pop those bits um, just there. I'm just going to wipe over my little um, surface area and then I can show you the shaping of these lovely um, little Glamorgan sausages. So let me just pop that just over there. I can pop a little bit more antibacterial gel onto my hands just like that and then we can start to think about our little shaping and what I've got is I've just got a bowl just there and to shape them I find it um, quite, uh, quite good to have a little bowl of water just to dampen off your hands when you're doing it. So in true television style and uh, video style here's some that I made earlier. This is actually half a mixture because the other half I've got uh, ready to show you afterwards. So as I said all that we've got is we're just going to flatten it down just like that and you can see that we've got that lovely mixture just there. Then this will easily make um, sort of three to four little um, sausages or four large ones. I'm just going to make um, three sort of smaller ones this afternoon because for a lunch with a nice side salad it's quite a nice um, sort of size. So let me just get those bits uh, there ready. I've also got um, some breadcrumbs that we're going to use to coat them uh, with afterwards. I've got a little bit of flour and I've also got my egg just there. So once I have shaped them I'll show you what I'm going to do with those bits and I'm going to grab the rest of those little um, breadcrumbs just there. So I've got that just there. I'm just going to dampen my hands. I don't want them really really wet but these are in the shape of a little sausage um, or you can do them in the sh just as a little fish cake um, sort of shape but you can see I've dampened my hands and it just makes it easier to compact it and then you don't get as much um, sort of uh, mixture all over your hands and you can see that I've sort of got it all compacted now and all I'm going to do is just roll it then into a little sort of oval sort of sausage shape right you'll probably have a little bit more time um, to do this but we've got one just there so I'm going to get my other one I can pop a little bit more water just on my hands just like that and that does really really help right um, it stops you from having loads of mixture on your hands so we're just going to press those down and then once it's all compacted together we can roll it as I said into that sort of sausage um, sort of shape um, or as I said you can do a sort of more of a fish cake um, sort of shape if you wanted to so I'm just going to pop a little bit of um, water on my hands and take a little bit of that out so they're all nice and even and I can add the rest of that um, to the other mixture and all I'm doing is just roll it in my hands just as so until you get more or less 
three pieces exactly um, the same size. So we've got that um, just there just to sew and you can see that they're ready then to coat, right? So let me just pop that just to the side, just like that. And as I said, when we're coating things, what we need is we need to dip them in a little bit of flour, then we're gonna add them to the egg and then I got my little breadcrumbs just there. No need to have um, purpose, um, you know, ready-made uh, sort of breadcrumbs. They don't need to be toasted. Just pop them in just like that. So I've got that bit just there. So all I'm going to do is I've got my little bit of flour just there. I'm just going to roll it in the flour. Make sure you're coating it. And that aids the egg to stick to it, right? Um, so I then just dip it in the egg just like that. Not the best and not the most pleasant of jobs. And then literally, I'm just gonna roll it around in my little breadcrumbs just like that. And you can see that one is now nicely coated. So dip it in the flour, make sure that you've coated all over, and then literally dip it in your egg and then roll it in your flour like this. And this is a great job uh, when you're doing this with children. They are gonna get messy. However, if they've made it, they're more likely to want to eat it as well. So we just pop that in the flour, just as I said, dip that around just as so, and then pop it into my breadcrumbs, just like that, making sure that you're coating everything over like that not wasting any of those breadcrumbs. If I had a little bit more breadcrumbs, then I would probably use them, but they will still be okay. So you've got your three little sausages just like that. And then, now that it's, they're cool and they've kept their shape, they can then be baked off in the oven at 190 degrees centigrade, that's fan, or 200 degrees centigrade if you're um, just a, a normal electric oven. That's gas mark five stroke six. They take approximately um, 15 to 20 minutes to sort of brown off, go piping hot. And as I said, we're going to serve those with a nice, easy side salad. So let me just go and wash my hands um, once again, get rid of all those bits, and then I can show you um, just a really quick um, little um, salad dressing. So I'm just gonna pop um, those to the side just like that, and I'm gonna cook those um, afterwards. Um, I'm gonna have them for um, uh, some food uh, later today. So let me just um, wipe all of that over just like that, because here are some that I prepared earlier, and you can see they're a lovely golden brown in colour, and they really do smell absolutely fantastic. I'm just going to leave um, that there just like that, and that will uh, cool down just a little bit. So as I've already said, I'm going to serve these um, today with a little um, green sort of um, side salad. But the main thing that I wanted to show you today was how to make a really quick um, salad dressing, right? And uh, I love salad, particularly now that we're coming into the spring and going into the summer, where you can have a salad maybe for lunch, maybe as an evening meal. And I always like to put a little bit of dressing on. And when I say a little bit, it is a little bit, because if you think about it, a salad dressing is mainly oil, and oil is a type of fat. Whether you're having um, a vegetable oil or an olive oil, fat is fat at the end of the day. There's good fats and bad fats, however, um, we don't want to be adding too much, right? But it's always nice to add a little bit of flavour. Now, when you're making um, uh, a sort of salad dressing, the only thing that you need to remember is that it's two parts oil, and it doesn't matter what type of oil that you're using, but a rapeseed or a um, olive oil are the better ones to be using because they're higher in monounsaturated fats. Um, I'm gonna use a vegetable oil, which is basically the second press of the rapeseed um, grain. So I'm just gonna take that bit off just there. And in actual fact, I've got some oil just there. And all, as I said, you need to remember is it's two parts oil to one part um, sort of vinegar. So let me grab myself a uh, little spoon. So I'm going to do um, a double quantity today because I'm going to do it in this little pot. So I'm going to add four parts um, oil and then two parts sort of vinegar or an acid. So that's three and that is four um, just there. 
So you can use things like lemon juice, you could use some red wine or white wine vinegar, you could make a balsamic dressing. I'm going to do a sort of lemony um, sort of dressing for our little um, salad today. So it's two parts oil to one part vinegar, so I need to add um, two little um, things of lemon juice just like that and that's for the base of our lemon dressing then I'm going to add lots of flavour so I've got a little bit of my favourite herb which is going to add loads of colour which is a little bit of parsley so that's about half a teaspoon um, just there I'm going to add a little bit of mixed herbs which again is a substitute for our salt so we're not adding any extra salt to this and also I'm going to add some garlic granules not garlic salt but garlic granules and they're going to give you a little bit of a garlicky um, sort of French dressing sort of flavour but without all of that salt then literally because I've done it in a little pot and it's got a lid on literally we then just need to shake that up and it goes from um, a separated liquid to a fine emulsion and you can see just there that you end up with a, a sort of um, a lovely little dressing just like that and I promise you that can be left in the fridge for up to a week and you can just pour it on as and when you want. So let me um, pop those just over there. So as I said I'm going to serve my three little um, sort of Glamorgan sausages with a little bit of side salad. So I've got some salad leaves just here. These are mainly sort of spinach leaves because they're jam-packed full of iron. They've already been washed for us um, and uh, they're really, really tasty. However, you could use whatever salad leaves you like. The other reason I like using these is because um, uh, spinach has got a wonderful name for it in Welsh. It's spigoglis. And I know lots of young people when I'm working out in schools that won't eat spinach but they'll quite happily eat something called spigoglis. I've then got just got some um, extra vegetables so I've got some red pepper just there, some pipir koch and I've also got um, some cucumber. You could add whatever vegetables, um, extra veg you want to that because obviously fruits and vegetables will help towards our five fruits and vegetables a day. And then the final thing that I'm going to add is my dressing in a couple of moments. The last thing that I just need is I've got my little Glamorgan um, sausages just going on just like that. And I always like to pop, do things in three. So I'll pop those on the side just like that. Let me grab just a little spoon from my little pot just here. I've got my little bit of dressing. I've just got a dessert spoon. I'm literally adding a quarter of a dessert spoon. That's all that you need. Um, you don't want to add too much because otherwise it'll go soggy. And you can see that we have got our wonderful Glamorgan sausages with a lovely little side salad. So I hope that you have enjoyed um, today's cook along. Don't forget that the recipe card for this, as well as all of the other recipes that we've done uh, uh, over uh, as part of the cook alongs, are available on the Facebook page as well as our website. Um, I look forward to cooking with you again in the future. I'm off to have um, some um, Glamorgan sausages and a side salad for my uh, lunch today. So Diachenval, thank you very much um, for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Diachenval and Heilvar. Uh,